live from SABC headquarters in Auckland Park, Johannesburg. Welcome to this week's first edition of The Watchdog. My name is Vuyam Vogo and on the show tonight... My fellow South Africans... President Cyril Ramaphosa cancels his Saudi Arabia working visit to lead national government efforts aimed at helping those caught in the devastation brought about by the Guadalupe Natal and the Eastern Cape floods. The address follows a special cabinet meeting that was held yesterday where government assessed the social and economic aftermath of the flooding in the two provinces. Our reporters bring you the latest ahead of the president's address to the nation. The watchdog starts now. The KZN floods death toll continues to rise. At least 443 people have died while 66 others are missing. Thousands have been displaced. The Nelson Mandela Foundation is among the latest organizations to join in the efforts. They stepped in today, assisting about 400 families from Guadalupe on the KwaZulu Natal north coast. Guadalupe the second hardest hit area after Eteguini. The devastating floods claimed 30 lives in the area and left hundreds more destitute. The area, which falls under the Ilembe district, also suffered massive infrastructure damage. My house was flooded and its walls have developed cracks. It is no longer safe using it. We can't stay in it. We need assistance. My house was washed away by floods. We are sleeping at our neighbor. We are thankful to the Nelson Mandela Foundation for coming to our rescue. The Nelson Mandela Foundation teamed up with government and private entities to donate food parcels, dignity packs and blankets to 400 beneficiaries. Some pledged to build houses and made offers to assist with skills development for flood victims. Mandela Day says, um, do what you can um, with whatever you have, wherever you are. And here the need is in KZN. Let's go to nelsonmandela.org and make our pledges so that we can then come over to help these families which are in desperate need. So we decided, you know, since we're turning 10, uh, we must actually give away 10 houses to the families that are in need here in KZN. So we have promised to rebuild uh, 10 houses here in, in, in KZN to make sure that these people are, are also assisted. Local officials say the help being provided by NGOs will go a long way, especially for those who have lost everything. So I was glad today that there are people who have come forward, who have said, told the people of Guadalupe that they are going to, to help them. We really appreciate as Guadalupe municipality. The relief measures also saw beneficiaries being taken through mental health and psychosocial support program. The Department of Social Development has urged school principals to compile a list of affected children who need school uniforms. Vusi Kumalo, SAPC News, Kwatugoza. Meanwhile, the search for missing people continues in many areas around Etegwini. This is the Clare Estate informal settlement just outside Durban. Resident Kopan Mpita has called this place home for a long time. But he says what happened last Monday left him shattered. His helper and his one-month-old baby were swept away by the water and they have not been seen since. And they are using whatever tool they have to search for the missing people. I've accepted that they are no more. I've been in so much pain since I was admitted in hospital. But through the grace of God, I am through everything. We only need to find their bodies so that we can find closure. There are many other families whose loved ones are still missing. In Tozoma, north of Durban, families are still hopeful that the bodies of their loved ones will be retrieved. A heavy current of water blew him away. That is what I think. But 
the issue is, is that the person has not been found now and we need assistance or, or, or of, of, of having dogs or, 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 or some, something like a rescue team. My aunts are one of her children crying in the bushes. She managed to save her, but sadly we lost two others. We are still very distraught about the whole ordeal. We had hoped that the one who was doing the trick was going to make something out of his life. Meanwhile, a diver has died in Pisamarisberg. He reportedly experienced breathing difficulties while searching for bodies at the Henley Dam. Close to 200 rescue teams have been deployed in KwaZulu Natal. Vusi Kumalo, SAPC News, Durban. The number of damaged schools due to the floods has now risen to over 600 in Guazulu Natal, while over 100 remain inaccessible. More than 50 learners have been killed in the floods. The Department of Education in the province is calling on parents to put their safety, or rather the safety of their children first, before sending them to school. This as schools reopen tomorrow after the Easter holidays. At least 630 schools have been affected by flooding in the province. Preliminary figures for the damage are in the region of over 400 million rand. Bretonwood High School in the south of Durban suffered huge damages. Classrooms were submerged in water, resulting in complete damage to equipment such as computers, printers and school books. Parents here say even though mop-up operations started last week, a lot of work still needs to be done to get the school ready. There are also concerns about the safety of the buildings. We can notice a lot of cracks in the building, uh, especially in the bottom, you know, all these bottom classes. So the, the question is that even though the, 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 the upper level is, is not uh, very bad, but because of the bottom level, so if the learners has to use those classes, we don't know what will happen. So we, we, we recommend that we get you know, people who can come and actually declare the building safe for our learners before they even come back. The Department of Education in the province says other schools that were not affected may be used to accommodate learners from the damaged schools. Authorities say the number of inaccessible schools has now reached over 100. Our communication with the, those schools is that they should not risk going to, to the school. Uh, we have been in communication with the principals, with the school governing bodies, and uh, we are using this platform also to, to be communicating that message uh, to the parents to say for this week they should keep their children at home. Basic Education Department Minister Angel Muzecha is expected to visit the province on Tuesday to assess the damage. 57 learners have been reported dead, while five are still missing. Simpiwa Makanya, SABC News, Durban. Well, on our sister program, the um, uh, full view, we had an interview um, uh, with uh, the MEC um, uh, in the province about the latest from um, their end. Take a listen. Uh, opening one of our schools, and uh, what we have uh, given as a directive is that uh, for learners that uh, are not uh, able to access uh, their schools, uh, must present themselves to the nearby schools because we have also identified that uh, in certain areas, learners are attending what we call schools of choice. So they will leave a school nearby and, and, and decide to attend another school, which is now uh, inaccessible. So we are saying that in order to avoid the teaching and learning time, they must present themselves uh, to nearby schools and principals of all schools have been made aware uh, that uh, they must be able to, to accept uh, those learners. But in other schools also, we will now be following, uh, at least for the next two weeks, uh, what we call the rotational timetabling, uh, because um, certain classes have been affected and certain uh, have been spared. Certain classes have been spared. So we will be prioritizing, for example, when it comes to a secondary school, we'll be prioritizing metric as well as grade 11, who must be attending at least on a daily basis, and other classes must then rotate until we are able to deploy all the mobile classrooms that are, are, that are required. 
Education, KwaZulu Natal uh, Education MEC there updating um, us on our sister program for view earlier about the schools situation and the advice that they are giving to both pupils and parents. Up next, our panel weighs in on, among other things, the criticism leveled at the government's responses to the floods catastrophe. Well, governments, the government's responses um, uh, to the floods have been criticized at some quarters. Uh, people saying they have been tardy. Um, they haven't moved as swiftly as perhaps they should have. Hopefully, um, those I mean, are the issues that President Cyril Ramaphosa will be addressing um, when he speaks a little later. Uh, that address to the nation uh, that was scheduled for 20 hours has now been moved to 21 hours. So we do expect the president to be speaking now in about 45 minutes um, or so. Uh, we will, of course, be bringing you that address live here on the SABC News Channel. Well, joining me now, uh, analysts Dr. Beki Mgomezulu and Ongama Mdimka. Good evening to both of you gentlemen. Thanks very much for your time this evening. Good evening, Vuyo. Thank you, Thank for, you having for having us. us. In fact, uh, uh, the, the, the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Dr. Ngosazana Dlamini Zuma, we are told will brief the media tomorrow on the declaration now of a national state of disaster in terms of Section 27.1 of the Disaster Management Act due to, the statement says, the magnitude and severity of the damage caused by the severe weather events occurring in various municipalities on in Guazulu Natal, the Eastern Cape, and other provinces, resulting in the loss of life and damage to property, infrastructure, and the environment caused by heavy rain, flooding, strong winds, landslides, etc. Now, this statement, of course, uh, comes on the back of criticism leveled by some people at the government's efforts that um, uh, you know they have not been as agile as they should have been under the circumstances given the situation that this statement has just prescribed. Do you think people have a, 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 um, a point on Amam Timka? Uh, good evening, Vuyo, as well as your, to your listeners. So whenever there is a disaster, a catastrophe of this nature, swift responsiveness is crucial. First of all, around the messaging being present where, you know, things are unfolding and, and, and being invisible in terms of the government departments that ought to respond to national disasters. Cities have got a mechanism in which they track their responsiveness to disasters. Uh, all the emergency management uh, 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 services, among others, so that I think that 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 structure needs to be, uh, you know, cascaded to the national level as well, in terms of what services get to be triggered and what, from a political management perspective, gets to be, uh, you know, immediately visible when we have a national disaster. So, for example, the announcement about the army and the additional support that is going to be there. I think it came either in, in the past uh, day or two um, where it should have been prompt, uh, uh, as prompt as possible. Well, uh, we, 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 we did see, uh, uh, Dr. Mgomezuru, I mean, the president um, with some ministers on the first day and then a day later we saw ministers of uh, uh, water, small business, uh, human settlements, transport descending uh, on the affected areas of Guazul Natal. Two, as Ongamam uh, Tim Gawa was saying, one, so their solidarity with the people who have been affected, but also to begin talking about uh, uh, what their respective departments were going to, to, to bring to the party. 
No, thank you very much, Vuyo. I think that uh, the arrival of uh, the president uh, in Gozul Natal, uh, especially in, in Etegwini, uh, was a welcome move. But uh, I would share my sentiments with my colleague that uh, it came too late. First of all, uh, you would expect that, uh, as my colleague is saying, that ordinarily uh, you would anticipate such situations, more especially in the coastal provinces of uh, the Eastern Cape in Gozul Natal, given the experience we've had in 2019. So it's not something that is happening for the first time. So one would have expected that uh, we would be almost uh, ready for any eventuality. In that case, then, what it means is that uh, the moment we saw that um, floods were coming from all corners, then we should have activated uh, our systems, or at least we should have kept them uh, on high alert so that uh, uh, whenever there is a call, they just respond immediately, including the army, uh, which has assisted in a number of instances. Mm. But having said that, uh, blaming one another right now is not going to help us. Mm. It's just that uh, this is a learning curve for us. One other thing that was of concern to me, Vuyo, I happened to be uh, in, a, in, I mean, in Deben when this thing happened, and uh, you could see that uh, uh, people were really devastated. And there were a number of issues uh, that came to the fore. One of them, of course, uh, is the fact that uh, I didn't get a sense that... Uh, there was clear coordination between uh, the provincial government and the national government. I'm saying this because when the president eventually visited uh, the affected areas in Guazul Natal, more especially around Etebin, where I was based, uh, in fact, uh, he went to certain places, but then there were places that were totally uh, destroyed, uh, which the president did not get to see. Instead, the president went to where people had been moved to. You go to the schools, you go to the churches, instead of going to where these people have run away from to see the damage for yourself. So on this one, I wouldn't necessarily blame the president alone, but I would say the provincial leadership should have coordinated this thing much better, mm-hmm. adding to the point that my colleague has made, that all those who are supposed to assist in such circumstances should have acted earlier than later. Just uh, uh, earlier today, as I was driving in heavy rain, because it's been raining for the past three days, even in my rural area where I am, I heard that uh, some families, a family that lost 10, for example, they were still looking for the bodies and they were pleading for assistance in terms of sniffer dogs. I'm I'm happy that uh, that help is now coming, although uh, too late, but at least something is being done. So I would share my my friends, my my academic sentiment that uh, in fact we should have acted earlier and hopefully we learn from this and do things differently next time when we are hit by such a disaster. Uh, Ongama, I mean, as was uh, the case uh, with uh, COVID-19, I was seeing here, perhaps, uh, you know, we're being shown up, you know, uh, our tardiness, uh, you know, um, um, uh, lack of timeliness, you know, responsiveness, uh, our being shown up. Uh, in other words, our systems are not agile. You know, and disasters like these, as was the case with COVID, then uh, only expose problems that have been there for for the longest time. Sure. So I think it's important for us to acknowledge uh, that in order to truly evaluate a response, we need a number of tools. Among them, the reports as to when the alerts were issued to the relevant agencies and how long it took them to respond and what nature of response has been given. So without that, it's always limited and sometimes maybe unfair to those that have been uh, in the thick and thin of things, you know, working hard to try and respond uh, to the matter. However, indeed, there does need to be a, a lot of focus on early, uh, you know, uh, warning signs, um, as well as early responsiveness, and also the fact that not that you would prevent a crisis from happening, but we could be bre- better prepared. You'd recall that during COVID, there needed to be a hard lockdown, which was aimed at preparing the uh, healthcare sector in order to be able to better respond. In something like this. You actually, uh, it's very difficult to 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 be prepared at the in the in, in, in up to the right uh, level of preparedness. 
However, there are some things which need to be looked at here significantly. Among them are munis municipal regulations on buildings um, and infrastructure um, in, in, their, in their own areas. I mean, it, it would be interesting to determine when some of the geotechnical studies were done in these areas that have been affected. Uh, and, and, and whether long-term flooding was identified. I'm not talking now about the ones necessarily on flood plains per se, but those where you find that it would have been an area that was deemed, you know, a, 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 a appropriate for human habitation at the time the studies were made. But all of a sudden, because of whatever the case may have been, you find that you know the, 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 when when it's flooding, it's not able uh, to 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 cope with the floods. Also, municipal, municipal infrastructure, uh, especially in terms of managing stormwater, among other things, has been a problem in many South African cities. And I think that this is one of the problems that relate directly to the political situation in which municipalities have found themselves, where you find that the debilitating political battles have an overbearing effect on budget allocations as well as the focusing of each of the portfolio heads on what needs to be done per department in order to make sure that work continues to be done and um, that's preparatory. I mean, you, there's a lot that can be done in, my, in preparing for floods as far as infrastructure is concerned, e even if it doesn't necessarily pre entirely preclude the occurrence of floods. I'm glad you're mentioning. I mean, the the uh, you know the COVID situation. Um, how you know we had to go into a complete shutdown in order to get our systems uh, ready, which, as you say, is in itself uh, not ideal. But Dr. Mumezul, one would have thought that you know the flood. Uh, floods we saw about three, three and a half years ago in Guadalupe Natal would have, uh, yes, not to this extent, um, uh, but would have at least gone a long way to, towards preparing um, the region and the province for, for this eventuality, which some people say uh, uh, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the case. In fact, uh, to a large extent, um, the critics insist um, this, uh, this, these floods have actually shown up the, the provincial and the regional governments there. No, you are absolutely on point, Vuyo. As I was indicating earlier, that uh, uh, given that this is not the first time that we're experiencing uh, this adverse weather, one would have expected that uh, we should have learned from the previous occurrences, including the one in 2019, which is not too far away from now. So which means that it's something that is recent and we should have taken lessons from that so that in the event that uh, we experience something like the one we've experienced right now, at least we could reduce uh, the amount of damage that we've seen. Because what we've seen happening and what I experienced, Vuyo, driving from Eteguini to Mpangen, which normally takes about one, uh, one hour, 45 minutes. I was on the road for 12 solid hours. I left Eteguini at 3 p.m. and I only arrived at Mpangen at 3 a.m. the following day. That's how terrible the situation is. And the concern then for me is some of these bridges that were affected by these storms are not that old. So which means then the point that um, my colleague is mentioning is a valid one in terms of uh, uh, the workmanship. How much um, uh, workmanship uh, was looked into uh, whenever these bridges were built? I, I come from a rural area under Chozini local municipality. We know there is Chozini Dam, which has been here for as many years as I can remember. You had demonia, it survived. With many adverse weathers, it survived. Why? Because the, uh, the, those who built that bridge uh, invested a lot, they thought about it, and they made sure... Okay, um, that line there uh, giving us uh, problems. We're going to take a, a quick ad break, but this conversation is going to continue um, in a short while. Don't go away. We are building up uh, to that address by the president at 9 o'clock, where he is uh, supposed to give us a sense of uh, what uh, they discussed as cabinet at yesterday's uh, meeting, uh, which would then uh, um, inform us of uh, what to expect over the next uh, few hours.
hours and days, the help that's supposed to go to the people who are affected in the provinces of KwaZulu-Natal and uh, the Eastern Cape. The show continues after this show. Welcome back, and if you've just joined us, we're building up to uh, that address by President Cyril Ramaphosa, um, who had to cancel his Saudi Arabia working visit to lead the national government's efforts that are aimed at uh, helping uh, those who have been caught in the devastation that has been brought about by the floods in KwaZulu-Natal and uh, Eastern Cape provinces. That address, which was initially scheduled for 8 o'clock, is now has been moved to 9 o'clock. It follows a special cabinet meeting that was held yesterday where government assessed and uh, the, the the aftermath of the flooding in the two provinces and the president is now scheduled to speak on what they have decided as uh, the executive. Uh, uh, with me tonight are Dr. Peke Ngomezulu and Ongama Mtimga. Uh, but for now, we're going to bring in Siabonga Shachwaya, who is from uh, the Red South African, is a provincial manager at the South African Red Cross Society in KwaZulu Natal for an update on uh, what they have been seeing uh, from their vantage point. Good evening, Siabonga. Thanks very much uh, for your time. You've been part uh, of, uh, you know, the efforts uh, to try and assist people uh, who have been caught, um, you know, in the, in the devastation brought about by these floods. What have you been seeing? What have people been telling you on the ground? What are their needs? Uh, good evening and thank you very much. Uh, currently, the status uh, of the communities is quite devastating. We are noticing the situation getting worse, especially now since that we can be able to access many communities of which uh, in the past few days they were inaccessible. Uh, as it is right now, we are in a center that has just been opened uh, for more for more and more community members that are displaced that uh, in the past few days uh, they, they couldn't be accessed and they couldn't receive any assistance so that it tells you that these people have been displaced they couldn't get food they couldn't get warm clothes uh, as it has been continuing to to rain so as it is right now we are in a new center that has just been opened in yellowwood park uh, about 150 people have just been uh, brought in here and we are providing them with their essentials, food, um, blankets, mattresses, and warm clothes. And we are also going to continue to support them. We are also organizing a team of uh, psychosocial, psychosocial support that is going to, pro to be providing psychosocial support as well as restoring family links. Also, a team of um, uh, that's it, that works under our health and care uh, core program that is going to be looking into because we are, uh, right now we are uh, exposed to waterborne diseases uh, also so that is the, what we are organizing for the communities but the situation is quite uh, disturbing in the communities mm -hmm. well uh, i mean you're mentioning food warm clothes social psychosocial support that uh, you are offering as an organization is there help that you need to be able to, um, you know, uh, uh, sustain these services, but, but perhaps spread them also to, to, to other places? Yes, uh, one must uh, really commend that the, 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 the public has really uh, been very supportive. Uh, we, are, we are seeing really uh, South Africans joining hands into ensuring that those that are, are really affected are they, they are being supported. So we are, we are very much uh, thankful to the public for the support that they have given us. And also we are still calling for more support as the need is becoming greater and greater each and every day. Uh, we have had um, donations coming in. We have uh, in kind uh, in a form of cash of which we, all of that is being mobilized and directed straight into the communities. And we are still calling for more as there is still a great need in the communities. And who are the people that you're working with? Do you work with government, for example, or are you just um, doing everything on, on your own? Uh, we work uh, in partnership with government, especially disaster management, uh, as we um, 
sharing the responsibilities of uh, supporting and providing relief uh, into the communities. Uh, we also partner with other organizations. We've had um, companies like Santam coming in and supporting us, pick and pay, supporting with a great deal of, of, of relief items that are being taken into the communities. Um, the, those are, are partners that are coming in and uh, a lot of individuals uh, that are coming in to come in and support us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and, and uh, 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 perhaps you're uh, an appropriate person to put this question to. How, is your, uh, how well have you been able to work with the government? I'm saying this because earlier um, with uh, my panelists, we were talking about the criticism that some people are, are leveling at the government, saying it's a bit slow, um, you know, um, and uh, they could have been a lot more proactive uh, and so on. Uh, just, just how would you describe your interactions with the government? Have you received the kind of help you need? Have they been, you know... Uh, quick enough, you know, to, to, to provide you with uh, the things that uh, you, you need to be able to provide the services that you continue to, to provide? Okay. Um, the, the, the Red Cross Society being uh, auxiliary to the, to the government, mm. uh, in most of the time we come in to say, how do we uh, intervene? How are we going to be able to support? And uh, uh, and we have been having quite a good relationship uh, with uh, the government structures. Uh, and as they always say that disaster management is everyone's business. Mm-hmm. Actually, I would say we are all required or needed to come in and join hands mm-hmm. to come up with solutions mm-hmm. uh, to deliver to the communities. And uh, then mainly to expect that maybe the government can be able to, to copy uh, or can be uh, disasters of, of this magnitude because you are looking at a disaster, uh, one of the largest disasters that has, have ever hit uh, mm-hmm. KZN. And you would reflect back that we are still recovering from the COVID-19 lockdown, mm-hmm. the urban unrest that we witnessed in, in our province. Um, in the past couple of months, like uh, from December to, to January, we are coming from the floods that we also witnessed, the heavy rains and floods that we witnessed in, in, in our province. But I think with these experiences, our disaster management is being tested and also getting stronger with time and getting experienced. So in terms of coordination, because remember, there are also frameworks that are guiding um, the response that is being provided into the communities and also looking ahead post the incidents that are currently happening. I think that disaster management is being shaped into um, into the disaster management that it should be. And also, I think I would understand as people are becoming impatient and everything because we have experienced a lot as, as a province in Guadalupe Natal. And you might expect people to be impatient and also mainly people would always expect assistance to come at the time when they want it. But if maybe... Uh, we were just sharing a joke with some of the colleagues that are in the disaster management uh, of how much we haven't been sleeping, uh, compiling reports, having challenges of that we cannot access certain communities. Um, all of that, this, this is a data that is needed at the, end of, at the end of the day in order to ensure that even the relief and support is coordinated and is sufficient for the community. So it, 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 it's quite a process to respond to the communities and uh, I would encourage that we join hands to ensure that uh, we handle disaster, disasters and their impact as it is everyone's business. It is indeed uh, everyone's business. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time, for and what you and your colleagues and your organization and several other organizations, um, you know, including people who have come in to support with money, uh, with their time and, and, and the resources. Uh, this effort needs all of us. Uh, special thanks there to Siabong Slachwayo, who is uh, from uh, the Red Cross in Guazulu Natal, giving us an update on what they are seeing, the help they still need, um, the needs uh, of the people on the ground. They still need food. They still need uh, warm clothes. Um, so if um, you can do anything to get in touch with organizations like your Red Cross, like your Nelson Mandela Foundation, uh, that, uh, that story we brought uh, uh, for you um, earlier. I'm going to bring back uh, my, my analysts uh, now for some final thoughts. Dr. Peggy Mgomezulu, uh, I hope you are back even if it's on the 
telephone line, um, uh, we understand the situation there and how it's affecting, um, uh, you know, um, things. And of course, showed le load shedding rather, um, uh, not making life any easy um, on your part. If you were a, a Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, Dr. Mgomezulu, what would you say, or what's the one thing that um, you would you would really uh, um, address this evening, given everything that has been said and done over the past week? Dr. Mgomezulu, can you hear me? Okay. Ongamam Timka, same question to you. Sure. So government has already uh, suggested that they're going to be looking at uh, a private organization or an organization outside of government that's going to manage the relief uh, efforts for, for uh, and, and particularly the funds. And I think that that's good responsiveness to the concerns from the public that if these are in, in the hands of the state, which brings it closer to politicians, the monies might be used in bed, uh, uh, badly. My only concern would be that one, there is no, uh, you know, jumping to use uh, the organizations that are renowned, especially for relief, because some of the scale that is required here is actually close to a government department. So you need an organization with the technical know-how uh, and, and, and fast decision making but, but you cannot attempt to address a corruption problem by creating more problems uh, in terms of the efforts to, to, to respond in this relief efforts so flexibility is going to be key the ability to, have, to, to operate almost in the realm of the ambiguous as far as policy and procedure is concerned but that has to be coupled with transparency very clear internal audit processes and 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 rapid external uh, reviews or external audits, accountability and creativity as well as leverage. I think there are a number of organizations that are responding here. So whichever organization is going to come that's going to be appointed should not come with the arrogance of thinking that the genesis of the response is when they come to the party. So they should be able enough to see themselves as conduit of funds to organizations that are helping out already, while at the same time they may have services which they may want to render by themselves. So they should have enough humility to recognize that there are some areas where other people are working better or other organizations are working better and have developed systems and all they need to do there is to procure funds and distribute them quickly to those organizations and 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 and, and also recognize what the works of in fact even municipal departments um, can you know disaster management is done very well in instances where there are fires and other re related disasters so we shouldn't throw the baby with the bathwater as far as being sensitive to the role of government departments here mm -hmm. in being anxious about how the money is going to be managed. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Mgomezolo, your thoughts on uh, what perhaps should be foremost in uh, the president's uh, mind in addition to the obvious stuff like the funding um, that they are supposed to, to, to unlock and, and disperse? No, thank you very much, bro. For me, the first thing is that uh, the president will have to be honest with himself and then be honest uh, to the nation. And what I mean by this is to admit all the things we've been saying about late responses and then make sure that uh, he has the entire nation working together with him, his executive, and the entire National Assembly and NCOP. Uh, the way you would do it would be to first admit that things have not been done the way they were supposed to, but then also uh, consider the fact that uh, this is a natural disaster, it's of nobody's making. And then the next thing that the president will need to do would be to uh, inform us as the public that uh, let us put our differences aside and pull together. Because right now you might have seen in different instances where some political parties uh, are in fact using this opportunity uh, to gain uh, some uh, score or, or to score some points, which is not the right time to do that. All we need right now is a president 
who is going to unite all of us as a nation in all our different spheres and make sure that we pull together. Once we have addressed these situations in Guadalupe Natal and the Eastern Cape mainly, of course, there will be other places that are also uh, affected, but not as, um, as adversely as uh, the Guadalupe Natal and the Eastern Cape. So to say that, let us deal with this agent situation. Once the situation has come down, then we can start looking back and then uh, do self-introspection and ask ourselves uh, the critical questions like uh, 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 was asking uh, from the Cause, saying that there are certain things that we need, which also my colleague um, uh, Ongama uh, indicated that we must look at uh, the reports since this uh, disaster started. What have we done? Uh, did we act promptly? Who didn't uh, do what was supposed to be done? And what have we learned from it? So we don't wake up tomorrow and find ourselves in the same situation. And we will be surprised that uh, in my own rural village uh, of Ingwavuma, in December, not far away, in December 2021, we had a disaster. People's homes were totally destroyed. You had corrugated iron all over the show. I, for one, I had to go to Josine to get new tiles just because I could manage. What about people in my community who could, who could not manage to fix their own houses? Uh, in fact, help came very late, if at all it came. I know of people, some of them are my neighbors. They had to pick um, up the pieces all by themselves with no government assistance. So one would have expected that the three spheres of government, our constitution indicates that uh, they should work in tandem. You have the national sphere, you have the provincial sphere, you have the local sphere. So there is no way that people could be left stranded when you have these three spheres of government, when you and I are taxed each and every month without any break. So in other words, the point I'm making is honesty should be the first priority and then, of course, after the, 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 I mean, we've done the basic work, then we can blame one another and look at the reports and then chant the way forward because this is not the first and it's not the last disaster that we are going to experience as a country. Okay, and that is where we're going to leave it. Thanks to uh, both of you, um, uh, Dr. Begi Mgomezulu and Ongam Mdimka, who were our guests uh, this evening. We're expecting President Cyril Ramaphosa in the next, what, 10 or so minutes um, uh, to be... to. to to start um, with uh, his address, we'll bring you that address live from the Union Buildings here on the SABC News Channel. He cancelled his trip to Saudi Arabia to attend uh, to uh, this matter. Cabinet met yesterday and took some decisions about which President Sir Ramaphosa will be speaking to us this evening. So do stay tuned um, for that address. We'll be bringing it to you live here on the SABC News channel. From the Watchdog team, it's a good night till we meet again tomorrow evening.